Welcome back to the kitchen. We are Mad Rational. This is my man, Arthur Eve, and my man, Kurt, a.k.a. Fully Q, and I am Brandon, a.k.a. Twitch for Life. This is the cut of the week. Typically, during the cut of the week, what we do is we talk about a track, we talk about all aspects of it, and then we vote on it. Trash, a trophy. Yeah. Would you know about string theory? Feeling weary, black holes take your soul and get teary. Space dust clouds and asteroids near me. Cosmic particles and life theory. Watching my world erupt, I ask theory. But no info came from him, really. Just muttering words that I never quite heard. Because my mind couldn't speak clearly. Man, I to save my soul, there's no theory. Find control or lose control merely. Evolve, adapt to full collapse near me. Die in pain or fight it sincerely. Take off, blast and ask you who's near me. If you wanna cut the cord, escape, really. Ain't no reality check. Like watching the death of something you love so clearly. Floating on a star, looking back at the world I left. Black holes, light like years, no regret. Floating on a star, looking back at the world I left. No regrets. Floating on a star, looking back at the world I left. Black holes, light like years, no regrets. Floating on a star, looking back at the world I left. No regrets. I like UK stuff, you know, to a point, but I like UK, like UK, like R&B. When I like the UK mm-hmm. hip hop, mm-hmm. if that makes sense, you know, yeah. um, like for me, this translates more, more in the back of my mind. It's like more like a jungle style of because because of the yeah. well jungle well, the, the beat, drum and bass. It is a, it is a jungle yeah track track right yeah um, and that's not my like my personal favorite. But what I did find amazing is that if you listen to the words in the track. My man is saying some pretty like amazing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you so here's know. here's the thing about Inja, and this is I mean you can go to his Instagram, you can go to his YouTube pages. At one point he did like a um, positive message every day, and now you know he doesn't do it so much. He did, I mean he does it once in a while, but he is like genuinely the most like positive person. Somebody was interviewing him, and they were talking about like why how are you so positive? And he says. Whenever he starts feeling down, whenever he starts feeling out, he stops and takes three deep breaths just to center himself and like recollect, be be present. He brings himself to be present. Right. And that's just like, so everything he says is positive and intelligent and yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's well thought out. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. I mean, that's a great characteristic to have, you know. It's just, it's just a human being. Yeah. You know, not just a recording artist or anything like that. Um, but I identify with that. Like, I, I I readily tell people. I say it out loud to make it real and remind myself that this is who I want to be. Like, I practice extreme optimism. Mm-hmm. Right? And, yeah, and, you know, in a regular conversation, like, you say that to somebody, you know, well, that, it kind of throws them off a little bit. But, like, to remind myself, like, hey, there's... It's much harder to be positive about everything than it is to be negative. It's easy to yeah, be negative. It's true. easy to see the bad side of things. You know, very easy to be a pessimist. Um, it's but, easy. To, it's easy to be negative about things once you've made a habit of it. Yeah. But I think it's just as easy to be positive about things once you've made a habit of it. Once sure. you take a second. I mean, sure. Really, all negativity comes from. Not my always all negativity. Most of our like daily negativity comes from us overthinking about something that's happened in the past or worrying about something that's coming in the future yeah. not being present. present right right because because when you're present you have the power to affect the moment yes you know what i mean and so but when you're worried about the future or you know worried about all the things that happened in the past you don't actually have the power to affect either either one of those things um i mean you, you do have the power to affect the, the future per se um you know from one from one aspect of it, but I think, um, but nothing that happens now will affect the future beyond making a plan for it. Yeah, pre- preparation. Right. It's not set in stone. Yeah. You know, just because, just because you know, I I said, you know, Kurt, I don't like your glasses. Doesn't mean that Kurt's gonna go home later. Doesn't mean that Kurt's gonna go home later, and you know like break his glasses apart that's not what that means I might. you know what I mean that. <laughs> I might I though. might though <laughs> and that's the moment and that's the moment the next time I see you I'm like yo bro I need you to do better once you know I'm, where I'm at with the song is I'm I'm not a not a fan of production overall mm-hmm. um, you know after learning some additional things about the artist though I'm a fan of the artist mm-hmm. 
you know. Um, but for me, it's just the style of music. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. The sound, the sounds in the, in, in the track are, are dope. Um, the the lyrics are amazing. Yeah, right. Because nobody else is rapping about that stuff, right? Right. <laughs> um, so you can't take that away from them. Uh, so if if say you were to take the vocal track and put it on a halftime beat, halftime break beat. Yeah. Would you like that? I I think so. The reason I say that is because like. Even though even though he's he's spitting so much knowledge in that in that it feels like it's rushed, like with this with the with the speed of everything right now, mm-hmm. it feels like it, everything's trying to compete with itself with itself. So kind of so mm-hmm. things get overlapped in in a halftime. It, it would sound a lot better because you'd actually be able it'd to be, understand. Be, it. Yeah, you'd be able cleaner. To, there'd be more yeah. open area between the beats. I probably still wouldn't wouldn't like it, and the only reason is um, content wise, I'm good. The sounds of it, I'm good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not digging the flow. I'm not, I'm not digging how, how it's being spit. Honestly, that's all. So on that note, yeah. How do you feel about Big Boy then? Well, Outcast, Big Boy. I'm more of a fan of Andre Three, Andre Three Thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Big Boy has a lot of tracks yeah. where he does the same kind of thing. He does. He does. And how do you feel about B O B? So not not the rapper the song. <laughs> oh, I don't know I don't know the song then. The bombs over Baghdad. Yeah. Um, I yeah, to be honest with you, I've, I've I've heard it before. I I can't I can't bring it back. Mm-hmm. There you go. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, it's Club National Underground, Thunderbounds, and I stop the ground like a million elephants and silverback orangutans. You can't stop the truck. I like I like I'm under two thousand. But, you don't want that sound? Yeah, it's the. I got you. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, you know, like, for, like out for, for me, Outcast. It's all the slower songs that I that I attach to. Okay. And so you're you're. It sounds like you like more of that like old school. I do like, like the back type. Yeah. yeah. Like. Yeah. That's fair. But I'm not taking away from the artistry of it. It's just yeah. my personal opinion yeah. on. That's fair. You know what I what so, I enjoy. So being impartial to the style. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the song? So the song is the song is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, everything that I don't like about the song is my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, if I had to rate the song from, like, from a professional ear, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Definitely dope and definitely recommended. You know, to other people that enjoy that style of music for yeah. sure, for sure. You know what I mean? So. I mean, you, you, you can't take that away from it. Yeah. To, in my mind, it's obvious that it's it's a it's a good song. It's a great song. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it doesn't make the playlist. It doesn't for me, just because of my personal you opinion. Yeah. Right. Because when I start my playlist, I feel like we're gonna I want we're gonna change that once we once we get up I, on stage and your MC and see some of this. Yeah, man. It's gonna I, it's gonna change pretty quick. All I'm saying is Jaden Smith is on my playlist now. So what do you what do you think about the track then? Coming from coming from an area where it's music that I that I'm very familiar with in a sense, mm-hmm. and I have a different type of I guess a different type of taste than, than what he feels. Mm-hmm. I like the song personally. I do. I do wish there was a little bit more with the lyrics. Like uh, I do feel like there's a point where the lyrics just cut all together and it's just a drum pattern. I got you on that. I wish it was more. Um, yeah, I wish you would have continued with it a little bit more. Like it, it feels a little kind of sort of un, not finished. Change up the rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that, that's just me. I like I like complicated random. <laughs> not, not, not not to throw some shade, but the bumble rap though. I am the one, the one. Like rapping on triplets, dude, for an entire track. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And that's why DJs that play this stuff only usually play like what a verse, or verse? Yeah. if not just the chorus. <laughs> no, which is fair. Which is fair. Which is icon living. It's not a record like a misfit just did it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I'll go. On. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's definitely, definitely, uh, definitely an A plus track in my book. Like, if I were playing for that type of crowd, like if we're playing a festival or something like that, yeah, definitely dropping that. that that's oh. straight hype. Especially Straight if he was there, I'm saying right. on the stage, right? Because he does that, man. Man, that's 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 one of the things you get. Rappers, they they 
rap on stage, but they're rapping to their own track. They're rapping with themselves on the backing track. Never Whereas he'll that. get up there, like, I never understood. He'll get up there on an instrumental <laughs> and freestyle. He won't yeah. freestyle the track that he already put out. He'll freestyle something new, something very specific to the crowd that's there at the moment. So I can understand like like why you would do both, right? Mm-hmm. I can I can I can definitely understand why you would go get up there and freestyle to, to an instrumental that's not your not your track, right? Um, but on the other hand, I also really understand why you would get up there and rap to your own stuff. I'm just, I'm just saying I, I understand I understand why you would do both. Now you know one is one is very like you know kind of self centered, and the other one it's is like kind of based in based in passion. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, he's passionate about his craft. He's passionate about mm-hmm. the art of the of the, the the music and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? When somebody has something to say, you can't stop them from saying it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it kind of goes to like Eminem. Like you listen to Eminem's lyrics, and they're like crazy, but all over the place because he's got he's got a lot of he's things to say. About he's passionate the, about. The, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but then you you look at somebody like um, say. Uh, I don't know, you know, name a name a New Orleans artist, you know, you know, like a, a juvenile or or a mystical. Mm-hmm. I mean, are they passionate about the music? Yes, but they're way more passionate about the money. And when they get up on stage and, and rap or whatever, it feels more self centered than anything else. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm not going to be the one to tell you what they're thinking or why they're doing it. I'm just saying what it feels like. The vibe is different. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I've I've been in I've been in that situation before. I've been on stage. You know, uh, with with a mic in my hand, you know, saying foolishness. I've also been on stage before with a mic in my hand, you know, uh, you know, doing my own my own stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and both felt amazing, you know. So I get it, I get it. I'm not I'm not mad. I'm impressed, for sure. You yeah. know, definitely definitely impressed by somebody who who would want to get up get up on there and actually give a performance. That's what's amazing about artists like that, right? Mm-hmm. Is because when they when when you go to a concert, you're not gonna get the C D like Yeah, you're gonna get I, a new a new so experience every yeah, time. Yeah. That's and I think that I think that is like super super dope. Yeah. I mean because I mean think about it, like why would you ever go to a Kanye West concert? <laughs> you're gonna get the same stuff you got plus a little bit of, you know, a hint of Kanye, as they call it. <laughs> and, and, you're gonna, and you're gonna overpay for it. You're gonna over yeah, you're gonna overpay for it. it and that's me saying Kanye is like in my top five, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like Kanye is definitely in my top five, but I mean I'm not gonna go to the concert because the CD is amazing, you know. Late yeah. orchestration is amazing, but uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that. So late orchestration, the late reg, like an orchestration version of late registration. It is. Yeah, they do. That they yes. Okay. I have it on DVD. It's amazing. So on the on that same kind of aspect of things, when you when you go to a when you go to a performance and you see like uh, like say an artist singing to a singing or, or rapping to a track that they've produced or, or you know put out that has what's I'm looking for, that has the back vocal the back vocals on the track as well, mm-hmm. what are your views on that? Consider not take into consideration. I'm not talking about artists that have like choreography or stuff or stunts or stuff that they're doing mm-hmm. through their performance. I'm talking about those artists that are just standing there in the middle of the stage and they have their st- the, the same stuff that you would hear on the on the on the, on the album mm-hmm. is what they have is playing as their back as their back so I, th- I think this goes into um, an, kind of a an iffy an iffy area mm-hmm. because it truly depends on how big your fan base is like let's take let's take um, you know and not not I'm not going to take the verbatim history but I want you to think about an artist like Kevin Gates Right, like Kevin Kevin Gates is now big and mainstream, but he wasn't always that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like in the beginnings of Kevin Gates, when Kevin Gates was just a name that was whispered around Louisiana, right? Like if he had the backing tracks on his, uh, you know, on his performances, so what? Mm-hmm. Right? But now if Kevin Gates go, you know, has a concert and he's got the backing tracks, people are gonna be like, "What you need the backing tracks for? We all heard your CD." Right. We all heard it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We so, want a performance now. Mm-hmm. Now people are going for a performance. Before people people were at a place because they were at a place, mm-hmm. and then he's marketing. Yeah. 
Right. You see what I'm saying? So it it, it depends on on you, where so you're at. In that in that same are you in that same same aspect? Are you saying that it's not acceptable for a a how do I put it a well established artist to do that if they're not if they don't have anything as far as like any kind of visuals on on the on their performance? In, in my opinion, that would be the equivalent of say. Skrillex or Calvin Harris or was it the, the, the Chainsmokers yeah. playing the exact same show well, like at multiple venues like the Chainsmokers did. I am the one, the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for it. I was sitting there like just a little shade, but yeah. they did that. In, they, and both literally. both shows were in Louisiana. Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. one in New Orleans and one in Baton Rouge. Rouge. It was the same exact same. Yeah. show. The track listing was exact same. Yeah. And I only say that because they're they're playing their own tracks. Fine, you can play your own tracks, but there's no there's no artistry. There's no originality in it. It's right. you're 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 playing your CD. Hit play and then jump around on stage for an hour. Yeah, so when it comes to things like that, I'm kind of glad you brought that up. When it comes to DJs, mm -hmm. right, who are, like, producer the, DJs. Producer DJs, right. The role of the producer DJ is a perform is that of a performer. Mm -hmm. their, their performance is with their instrument, which is the turntables, mm -hmm. right? So for them to hit play on a CD and their instrument is a turntables means they're not performing. <clears throat> right. Right. And this is where it kind of kind of gets you get in some shady area, right? Because if you have a rap artist or a singer mm -hmm. that has backing tracks but they're still rapping or singing, they're still performing. Now, whether or not the performance is taken as as good is different, but I think it has to do with with a combination of two things. Like I said earlier, is you know where they're where they're at their 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 level of, of, of fame um but also their ability as a performer mm -hmm. you know what i mean because let's be let's be completely honest if you're in the music industry and you're not doing live shows you're not making money right right, yeah, right. so even even these artists that are out here um that are amazing in a studio amazing when they're writing but you know what i mean they need their whole production team behind them to mm -hmm. sound awesome on the track yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that right because we appreciate the, the great sound yeah. but if they're not a good stage artist you have to try to make them one yeah and there's there's a place for all of that you yeah. know what i mean so i, I don't want to take away from it i mean is it is it not best practice no it's not you know i think it's, it's i think it's, i think it really is a question of like both ideals like ideally yeah. you would get there and do something Special yeah. for your fans, especially yeah. for the people who paid that money to come out and see you. Right. Something that you're not going to hear on a CD. Right. On the other hand, I also see where like if you get up on stage, yeah. well, if you get up on stage and you're rapping a song, and it's not the same things that your fan base knows, you, there's it's kind of a double. It's a it's a, line, it's yeah. a double edged blade in that yeah. your fans, the ones who want to sing along with it. Don't you alienated them. You have alienated them. Yeah. But sure. but in that same aspect, if you're known for doing that at shows, mm -hmm. well, that's exactly your fans yeah. know better than to, than to expect, expect that. So we can say it boils down to your brand. Yeah. You yeah. Know, truly. Your your brand and what your again it's it's, it's like like our conversation last week. Uh, what your um, motivation is, what you're going for. Yeah. Your perspective. Your perspective. If yes, you're going for the money. You're going to be as marketable as CD as possible because right. that's what sells. That's right. what people want to go and see. Right. If you're there and you love the music, if the passion is in the music and not the money, then uh, you're going to do something that yeah. people are going to enjoy. Yeah. Right. But it, you know, and it's like when when you do that, like when you do the stuff that's for the money, mm -hmm. you're going to attract the people who want to be seen with the money yes but yes. then when you do it for the love for the passion you're going to attract the people that just love the art and the people who are seen for the money yes and that's that's the, yeah. that's the crazy part so like why not just do what you love at the end of the day that's, you know what i mean if you don't love it get out if you exactly. love it stay in yeah. you know and 
you know, going back home with all this, it looks like, you know, my man Inja really truly does love what he's doing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I think, I think, you know, for that, that deserves a, you know, a place, a place on the, on the pedestals, because you don't have a lot of those artists left, you know, in the industry right now. So, you know, like we do every week, this is the moment where we we vote on the track, right? Trash, a trophy. It's, it's, it's a trophy. Yeah. It's an brain man. It's a trophy. It's a trophy. I'm gonna say the same thing, even though it's not my style, um, even though it's not uh, you know what I would throw on my playlist. I can't take away from the art, and I can't take away from the vibe and the soul of the artist. So it is definitely a trophy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This has been Mad Rational in the Kitchen. If you like what you see here today, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, right? Also, follow us on our social medias, and remember, this is a conversation, right? We're not here to argue. We're not here to debate. We're just here to discuss some topics. Feel free to post your opinions in the comment section, and of course, throw us some feedback so we know what, what you guys want to talk about later. And as always, do better. Check on social media. So now it's time to say goodbye. I was laughing all the time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>